Hello YouTube, this is now sharpening all. I'm just gonna sharpen up my Patrick Kalvik custom Nylox Nakiri. It uh, doesn't need a sharpen because you can strop this forever almost. Probably at least half a year in uh, home use as you see absolutely razor sharp. But, yeah. I've stropped and stropped and stropped and I'm tired of stropping it, so I'm gonna sharpen it mostly for fun. I'm starting by wetting the stone, it's the GNS 300, uh, very very good stone, I'm gonna see how it handles the Nylox, it's a little more wear resistance than the normal steels, I'm just drawing some patterns on the stone. Using my Atoma 140 as always. I always keep my stones flat so they don't need much. That's all it took. I like to do this because you get a fresh surface on the stones. Sometimes when you don't sharpen on them for a long long time which I'm just a home cook, so you don't need to sharpen them often because yeah, these are great knives. I can show you how thin it is. The thinner the blade, the easier to just maintain the sharpness with the stop. This is just uh, ridiculously thin as you see. Can you see how thin this is? I don't no, how well the camera will pick this up, but I can actually flex. You see that the light changing? That's the edge flexing. I don't. You see that? I hope you can see it. It isn't important, but it's so thin the edge flexes. I'm gonna drag off the edge going once, two, and three times. That's just to make the apex now uniformly blunt to remove any weakened metal. So I'm gonna start. This is flat. I'm gonna sharpen maybe two, three, four degrees over that. So very 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 low I'm thinking maybe this is uh, 8, 9, 10 degrees oh sorry it's way lower than the usual 8, 9, 10 degrees what's what I'm gonna say I'm guessing this is about 5 or something I use it for boneless protein I use it for Vegetables, I don't have a problem with shipping or rolling or something on them. The DNS actually cuts this mighty fine. It feels a lot finer than 300 when sharpening such rare resistance hard steels. It feels and yeah, it actually polishes like uh, four to 500 stone. I'm gonna show you. And stones don't get blind on grits because softer blades, the grit will tear up and grab onto the knife much more. This is the sharpened side. So you see on the sharpened side, you see the difference in gleam. So yeah, can actually check. Don't have a burr. I'm just continuing. And I'm sharpening that low because the steel has a pretty damn good heat rate. Made by Patrick Kalvik, a Swedish knife maker who knows this stuff. So I'm pretty confident in the blade. And I'm just moving off a little. And to people that saying it's the swarf that cuts, no, the swarf actually 
it's in one thing that's to make the stone stop cutting it's just released the brace from the stone so yeah it's, it rolls onto and gets finer finer I actually got my burr already at that low I'm actually sharpening completely flat there's no micro bevel there so you can see the entire blade road from there is the entire bevel and while still being so crazy thin focus damn you oh come on there it's it's ridiculous the performance on this is yeah I, I got no better words than ridiculous you you don't feel anything when cutting it's it's like a, using a lightsaber it's it's fun but when you go to other knives it ain't fun because it ruins all other knives even the shibata or something like that is um, don't get me wrong it's a fantastic knife and performer but when you get something that is truly thin I mean truly thin it's flexes uh, from Patrick Kalvik, Robin uh, Dahlman, another fantastic maker, Matthias, I think it's Ekman, or yeah, lots of makers. Don't I like Swedish ones? Don't matter where they're from, but there's so many fantastic makers out there making blades that are thin. Always when you buy custom, go for thin performing blades. Uh, heavy duty all made for cracking open lobsters etc you need a cheap one you don't need an expensive one to do that buying custom and expensive knives they should be ferraris they should be performance knives lamborghinis ferraris alfa romeo a sports car it should be a high performing blade And nothing more. Yeah, that's. I can't believe how thin it is every time I sharpen it. It's a joy to sharpen. And trust me, going to properly heat treated steels and sharpening them compared to normal steels, yeah, you can't compare it. It's so crisp, so fine of a feeling that, uh, yeah. It's much easier to sharpen because you know exactly what the steel and knife is going to do. So yeah, I love them. And this, this, and the other one from Patrick Kalvik, the K-tip uh, in ABL. Because as you've seen earlier, those two are my highest performing blades by far. Right in there, I can't use any pressure here. It's just the weight of the knife and maybe 500 grams. If I use more weight, I will bend um, the edge. Well, the edge won't be straight, it will go back and forth, and I will weaken the metal very quickly. So it takes a little skill and know how. I can't use any pressure, I will just deform and crush the edge. This is a fantastic stone on this steel. I actually don't like it on softer steels. It's a bit scratchy, but on this, come on. Fantastic. I'm raising just a tiny bit at the end, just to get it going. A little, a little more in the middle portion. That's the oftenmost portion. Now I'm at around 8 to 10 degrees. Did the uh, same on the other side. Just to get a little more strength. Just a little bit more here. That's important. 
feel when your burr is uniform and it's just as big from heel to tip. There, perfect. Now using the lightest pressure, you just pull the shear off the burr and weaken it. I'm guessing, I don't know if it shaves, but I'm gonna at least get it to cut magazine paper off for 300 stone. If it ain't sharp on your courses, stone, of course, if you're using a 60 grit, but a normal stone like 240, 300 like this, if it ain't sharp, it won't be sharp on a thousand, it won't be sharp on a four thousand, eight thousand, etc. Learn to sharpen. Then you can get it pretty damn sharp on a core stone. Now I'm at 11 minutes because I'm talking way too much. I would like to say something. I'm finally at 100,000 views on my channel. Thank you very much guys and gals if there's any gals watching. I appreciate it very much. I'm just stopping a little to get if there's any burr. You can actually make a burr pit. No, a knife pretty clean from burr at this grit if you know what you're doing. Joe Calton is one, Jeremy McCalton. Uh, Cliff Stamp and many others are very good at sharpening with lower grits. I'm not. I like high grits, but you can get some fantastic edges of course you get. And I'm just doing this just to optimize my chances of cutting the paper. There, first of the 300. And as you see, I dragged off the edge, so there's no edge at all. As you see. It's coarse, but it easily does it. It's no problem at all. That's off a 300 stone. I got extremely blonde armor. I'm just gonna strop it a little on my pants, which is them and them. Just to clean it up just a tiny bit before trying to arm shame my armor. You see? Yeah, that's actually no problem at all. Can you see? See all that hair? That's off. Uh, 300 stone, you see? I got blonde, very fine, delicate arm hair. It's, yeah, so the, those should actually be harder to shave than coarse here. So yeah. Just putting it to the side, just rinsing it off, you don't want any dirt on it. Going to the Nano Professional 1000, and then afterwards Professional 5000. Uh, there, I'm checking if I'm filming. I'm not going to bother shaving with all the grits if I can make it shave of a 300. Of course, I can make it shave of a thousand. It's yeah, that's a given. So, what I'm after is a more slicker edge. So nothing. I'm not. I'm not overdoing it. I'm gonna knock off the shoulders and a little behind the edge work here, but that's there. Knock off the shoulders. That's important if you hit the shoulder or the edge here to get bad technique on sharpening. You can severely damage the edge. And yes, I've done it many times. 
Because I'm too lazy to go around. There was actually a little bit left in the middle. Here I saw now. A little bit dead flat. Especially when doing this kind of uh, thin edges. There. Always rinse and repeat. For sharpening, go for performance. Thin your blades out until they start to crumble. Microchip, uh, roll, whatever. Then you know it's performance. Then you can back it off, add a micro bevel going from here to maybe 10, 15, or oh, 15, 20, 25 degrees. Just one or two swipes for strength. And when you're done that, you know you have a high performance tools. Now I'm shortening behind the edge, just pushing a little and removing the shoulder. And bringing the edge closer and closer to the profile of the blade. And yeah. I love sharpening harder steels, a little more wear resistant steels like this. Patrick Alvik makes some fantastic knives. So you see it actually taking off a little the stone. I'm watching how the edge and the scratch pattern changes. You can't see that in the camera but going from hazy to a little more refined and moving that refined pattern more and more closer to the edge Polishing and just wanting it to look somewhat okay. There, going to the behind the edge on the other side. As I said, this easily, at least here, which I use it three, four times a week, helps it edge for at least six months. As you see, it was razor sharp. I just dropped it a little bit quick. And yeah. So this is a knife you need to sharpen maybe once a year, maybe half a year. And then you do what I do. So we yeah, through the knife you have for a lifetime, then your children and maybe grandchildren will have them for a lifetime. So it's truly worth the money. And you're supporting local businesses, small time folks trying to make a living. Not giant companies that have so much money that you nearly don't care about you as a customer. I'm not saying that as a bad thing. Swilling, for example, makes some good knives in their Miyabi line, but they can't be compared to true craftsmanship. If I can get 10 Miyabi blades and 10 of the Kramer knives, not the custom ones, of course, but the swilling ones, I would rather have one good one from Patrick Alvik or uh, Robin Dahlman in a heartbeat, but that's my opinion. Let's see, yep, moving to the edge. Then I'm just checking that there isn't any debris on the stone, a little particle that will slam into my edge. Again, now I'm going at around 10-ish again, just the weight of the blade is all I need. And I'm not over sharpening, I'm just making the teeth in the edge finer and finer. Nothing more, you aren't creating a new burr, or you are, but it's so microscopically. Uh, yeah, microscopic small so you aren't trying to create a new burr and peel for a new burr you don't need it the edge is already there you can actually see a little small fragments of the edge 
being um, washed away. Again, I'm just stropping to make sure if there's any struggling burr that they are getting off. Now I haven't done anything to refine or minimize the burr. I'm not going edge leading, I'm just normal sharpening, alternating the pressure, blah 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 blah. And we're going to see. Again, this don't lie. It's scary sharp. That's of a thousand bit because this is so hard, very resistant steel. On the Victorian Oaks, this is thousand, on this it's two, two thousand five something bit. So, yeah, I'm going to the 5k, which is 5k at around Victorian Oaks. This is actually also wet paper, so it's much harder to cut. So this is gonna behave like a 6, 7, maybe even 8k. And I got a tiny bit of crazing, uh, cracking, micro cracking on my 5k. I don't know if you can see it. Maybe if I do like this you can. Yeah, there's actually showing pretty good. Can you see how it dries up? Yeah, you can see that, can't you? That's not no professional. I, I can't understand why they can't change their damn formula. Because Chapman Pros don't do that, but I like the feeling of the professionals work. But let me say that. Hands down, the Shepton Pro 1000 is a way better stone than the Professional 1000 and the higher end series. The only stone I've found that I don't like, I haven't tested them all. I tested Shepton Pro 1000 5k, those were great stones. Great, I mean better than the Professionals. The 221 from the Shepton Pro I hate, it's, it's useless. It's so... I used it on hard steels, I used it on soft steels, just tears away anything in the stone, it's, yeah, I don't know what to say, and maybe I got a bad stone, I don't know, but I don't like it, so yeah, but I would want a Shepton for a thousand, and some higher end stones, maybe the 320 or something, if someone wants to give them to me. So, yeah. Removing the outermost layer so they don't keep cracking. Now I'm gonna spend a little more time behind the edge and at the edge. Just making sure it blends and uh, how do I put it? Um, that's a nice connexity to it. Actually, the feeling since it's begun to crack, when I take good care of my stones, actually. Um, also, I of course I air dry them, um, but I done this to ensure they get air in their boxes. Also, so they have no reason to behave like they do, but yeah, they do. So Nano, if you please for watching this, please change something so they don't crack as easy. I love them, but. They are very expensive stones and when uh, those are done I'm gonna change to something. Uh, 5000 has actually become pretty soft now so I'm actually, as you see that's the stone, that's not metal, that's the stone. So if someone were to ask me, should I buy the Nano Professional 5K? No, you should not. I've changed my mind. 
you shouldn't not try it. Buy the Shepton Pro Stones, the Shepton Less instead. Just racing to around 12 to 15, just kissing the stones. This is just refining and putting a tiny micro level on it. There, going to the behind the edge. I'm just putting on the tiny micro bevel for strength, nothing more. Mm, not a so thin blade, it won't hinder performance at all. It will actually just um, make sure the edge don't ship as easily, don't crumble or roll, or yeah, get edge damage or fatigue or whatever you want to call it at season. And when I'm stropping it, I'm stropping it a little lower so I'm actually rounding the shoulder and blending that micro bevel in it again. So. Yeah. I'm actually uh, like Nikita Yama 4K better than this professional. So I'm gonna actually if it's Look at that, it's, yeah, it's actually a bad stone, but it isn't uh, fun to sharpen. My 3k ain't like it, my 1000 ain't like it, but this 5k is glad it's gummy. It feels gummy, it feels like it's starting to tear up on itself. Just washing, of course, with my fingers going away from the edge. Now, just put in a micro bevel on. Again, same angle as before, around 12 to 15. As you see, I always go edge leading, edge away, edge leading, edge away. Just put a minute off the river. There. Standing up for. I will sit Jeff Sewell or was it Northwest Knife Guy or who was it? It showed actually just cutting into a cork, removing the tiny bit of fine burr, improved the sharpness of the blade. I'm sorry, there was someone I can't remember now, but. I'm gonna use what I have and uh, just a pair of scissors, just the plastic there. Just to get rid and I'm gonna check. Oh, it feels I actually don't think I got a burr, but it probably got one, but it's so damn small it won't make a um, difference. There. Wiping and drying. You see, you see on the third, pretty shiny. You see. And the camera, I know. Let's see, is it better if I go like this? Yeah. See, it's got a okay shine. It's a beat up knife, I know, but 
it's sharp it's sharp and very very thin focus time you focus why the uh. There it goes, you see how thin that is. That's crazy thin. So yeah. yeah. I'm just stopping very quick on my pants leg. It's denim. Denim has you got a whole denim pair of pants. You can finally use that as a strop. It's actually pretty good. So I said the paper is wet, so but as you see, this hasn't got a tip, but I'm gonna just test sharpeners. Yeah, that's sharp. And you can do that without a tip. That's sharp. This would ease away those everything you wanted in the kitchen and more so. So, yeah. Thanks for watching. As always, if you like what you saw, please share. Sharing my channel helps me a lot. Even more subscribers means that when I get many thousand maybe I can get someone to send me stuff and review etc so please share press like always helps and yeah thank you subscribe if you aren't of course hit the bell icon so you get notified and thanks for watching bye